the lifestyle of the believer, becoming seed minded. And look at Matthew chapter 11. We're just going to pick back up from where we left off. Becoming seed minded. Uh, Matthew chapter 11, look at verse 27 this time. In Matthew chapter 11, look at verse 27. All things are delivered unto me of my Father. Now, this is Jesus' teaching. Here's Jesus. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father except the Son. And he, watch this now, to whomsoever, what? The Son reveal him. Now, look at verse 27 in Amplified right quick. Become and see, minded, the lifestyle of the believer. Man, you get ready to rise tonight, boy, on a whole nother level. Look at verse 27 in Amplified. All things, now here's Jesus, all things have been entrusted and delivered to me by my Father. And no one fully knows and accurately, watch this, accurately understands the Son except the Father. No one fully knows and accurately understand the Father except the Son. And anyone to whom the Son, watch this, deliberately what? Wills to make him known. In other words, listen to what Jesus said now. Jesus said no one fully accurately understand who the Son is except for the Father. No one fully knows, accurately understand who the Father is except the Son. Only them two really know accurately, accurately, accurately. That's the word I want to give to you, accurately, accurately. Accurate. I'm talking about right dead smack on the money. So if Jesus reveals the Father or the Father reveals Jesus, they are giving you accurate information. Accurate. Accurate. I mean, it can't get no better. Perfect. All right, that, I, I wanted you to grab that because we got to understand when it comes down to our Christian walk, this, this walk, as people say, Christianity, the Bible, this is a perfect book, a perfect word, but, uh, but in an imperfect world and deal with imperfect people. But just because we're in an imperfect world and deal with imperfect people don't mean that this ain't perfect. So, I, so we got to make sure that we don't bring God down on our level and subconsciously look at the word of God. Now, you got to follow me because all what I'm sharing with you, you're going to see it again in a minute. We got we, we got to make sure we're not subconsciously bringing God and the word of God down on a human level on, on a chance. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Maybe we'll, maybe he'll heal, maybe he won't. You know, like you're playing dice. Or something. Well, maybe he'll bless you, maybe he won't. Well, no, no, uh, no. He, he's not in the maybe. He's an accurate God. And whatever he say, he mean. And he mean exactly what he say. And what he say is what he's going to fulfill. Because that's what he watches over. Are you seeing this here? So where should my confidence should be? In the word. Because that is the most accurate thing in the earth. It is the most accurate thing. In the that actually, it's the only thing in the earth that is accurate. Everything else is shaky. Everything else is unpredictable. But not the word of God. It's predictable, and it produces a predictable act. That's why we talk about becoming seed-minded. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Watch this here. Notice what it said. Come unto me, 
All you that labor, watch this, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Notice, take my yoke upon you and do what? And learn of me for what? I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall what? Find. You shall find. You shall find. You shall discover, watch this, what is already there. You're going to find. You're going to discover. Watch this, what is already there. But notice, first thing he tells you to do is what? Come to him. I got to come to him. I got to come to him. I got to come to him. Even in my heavy labor, I still got to come to him. Even when I'm working and it seems as if nothing is working, I still got to come to him. Why is he telling you and I to come to him? Well, hold your place here and go to Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to see here in a minute. Matthew chapter 6 here. We're talking about becoming seed-minded, the lifestyle of the believer. Come to me. Come unto me, all you that labor in the heavy laden. He said, and I and you shall find rest. Look at Matthew chapter 6. Look at verse 24 right quick. We in school tonight, praise God. Look at Matthew chapter 6, look at verse uh, 24. No man, watch this down, can serve two masters. No man can serve two masters. No man can serve two masters. Remember now, he's an accurate God with accurate information. So when Jesus says something, he's saying exactly what the father told him to say. Are you with me? What, what Pastor, what does that mean? What, what does that mean, Pastor? Well, Jesus said no man can serve two masters. So he's letting us know somebody going to control your life. You can't have, you can't, uh, two or three things can't control you. Somebody's going to be in control. Remember, accurate information. Now notice here, no man can serve to master. Watch this, for either he will hate the one, love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. No man can serve to master. Somebody going to rule you. Somebody going to control you. Somebody is going to be in the cockpit of your life. You can't serve two masters. And then he went on to say, you, uh, you can't, uh, you, you're either going to hold to one and despise the other. In other words, you can't, watch this, you can't hold on to two different worlds. It, it, it's impossible. You can't live a successful Christian life in this earth as a believer and hold on to two worlds. Hold on to what you used to do and hold on to God at the same time. Do what you used to do and walk with God at the same time. You can't serve two masters. Ooh, glory. Watch this here. Isn't this good? Watch this here. Watch this. Either you will love the one or despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And even though he's talking about riches and, and, and there again, people take that, talk about money. And, but he's talking about aunt loving it, putting that above God. But watch this here. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. It's not life more than meat in the body of raiment. Now, here's Jesus again saying, now, don't take no thought for your life. What you mean, don't take no thought? Well, I mean, what did he mean, take no thought for your life? Don't, in other words, don't be overly Concern. Well, let me just read verse 25 in the Amplified, because that'll help you out a whole lot. Verse 25 in the Amplified, it said, Therefore I tell you, stop being perpetually uneasy. Watch this. Anxious, worried about your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, about your body, what you shall put on. Is not life greater in quantity than food? And the, and the body far above and more excellent than clothing. The part I really want you to grab was, he said, stop being. Stop being perpetually uneasy, anxious, or worried about your life. In other words, look at verse 26. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not. For they sow not. For they sow not. Why is that the 
first example Jesus is given. Think about that for a minute. Why is that the first example or parable that Jesus is given after he makes the statement about being perpetually uneasy and anxious about your life? Notice what he says here. He said, behold, the fowls of the air. Watch this. For they sow not, neither do they reap. That's the first illustration that Jesus is teaching because Jesus is also, remember now, we're talking about accurate information. Jesus is showing us that sowing and reaping is how everything operates, even down to birds. And he began to show here how even though if a bird or a fowl don't do that, it still will not stop, watch this, your heavenly father from feeding them. Are you not much better than they? Okay, watch this, watch this. Why won't it stop? Why sowing and reaping? If a, if a fowl of the air do not sow or reap, and that's God's way of doing things, why is God continually feeding something that, that's not operating in this type of system? You know why? Because they're still God's creation. And God is obligated. He is committed to his creation. Oh, man. We're headed somewhere, so y'all just be, just, just, oh, Pastor, calm down. We're headed somewhere. He's committed. Shout, God is committed to me. Committed. Come on, say it again. God is committed to me. Committed. That's why I need to be committed to him. And that's why I'm committed to him, because he's committed to me. And if I'm not committed, he's still committed. That's why I should love him even the more. Because he committed himself to me even when I wasn't committed. So that's why I should even love him even the more. That's why I can't understand a struggle of serving God. How is it a struggle to serve somebody who's committed to you? How is it a struggle to serve somebody who feeds you when you didn't even deserve it? How, I mean, how, how is that a struggle to, to give up some time to somebody who gave up his son? <laughs> Think about it for a minute. He gave up his life, and we don't want to give up an hour. <laughs> but watch, that's, that's another story. But look right here. Let, let me finish on right here because I need to move on. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his statue? Why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field. Watch this. How they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Watch this. Wherefore, if God, so close, if God, if God, shout if God. Notice, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast in the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? In other words, he's telling him, why are you being uneasy or worried about your life? God is committed to you. If the fowls of the air don't sow or reap, he feeds them. Look at the lilies of the field. They don't even spin, but yet he take care of them. So why are you worried about your life? He's committed to you. He's already got everything mapped out to make sure you get taken care of. Shout, God has committed himself to me. Come on, shout, God takes real good care of me. See, because I'm, he I'm headed somewhere because I got to get my, sh my thinking shifted. I got to shift in my thinking because if I don't shift in my thinking, I will still be trying to take care of me. And watch this. If I'm still trying to take care of me, I will not become seed-minded. Because seed always goes out. Seed is not selfish. To sow means you have to give out of you. And if I, if I haven't settled that God takes care of me, I won't become seed-minded. Because I will always be need-minded. 
And this is where Jesus is trying to show them. Jesus is trying to get them to shift from becoming need-minded and to becoming seed-minded. Watch this here. Watch this. Watch this. Boy, this is good teaching here, Pastor Stevenson. My God. Watch this here. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, look at verse 31. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What thou shall be clothed? Look at verse 32. For after all these things, watch this. Go ahead. Do the what? Who is the Gentiles? Those who have no covenant with God. They seek ways on how to live. We're talking about the lifestyle of the believer. Becoming seed-minded. Gentile, those who have no covenant with God, they don't know how they're going to make it from week to week. They don't know what to do when the stock market crash. Those who don't know God, they don't know what to do if, if a famine hit the land. Those who don't know God, if, if, if the job shut down tomorrow, they won't know what to do. Those the, the Gentiles who, who don't have a covenant of God, watch this, if they haven't learned him, if they don't know him, they wouldn't know what to do. He said the Gentiles, they, they, they are the ones who seek these things, but that don't pertain to you. God has already got a system set up, set aside, laid out, mapped out, guaranteed for you as a believer. I'm going back here in a minute. That's why I said you got to follow me. Look at verse, for I thought all these things, do the Gentiles seek? Watch this. For your heavenly Father, what? Knoweth what? That you what? That you what? He... He know exactly. You think your need is a surprise? Your heavenly father knoweth. He knoweth. He knew and he know. Before you was formed in your mother's room, he knew you. He, he knew you. Before, before your grandmother met your grandfather, he knew you. He knew you was coming through that seed. And because he knew you was coming through that seed, he knew next that one day you was going to need this. So he already set some things aside to meet that need. He already knew what you will have need of. That's why he said, don't be worried about your life. I got you. Come on, shout, God got me. That's why he says, stop, stop being perpetually uneasy and anxious. Stop being, stop worrying about all this stuff. Because as long as you, as long as you keep putting pressure on how you're going to live, you won't, you won't operate in the system that I've already set you to operate in because you'll be trying to take care of you. And as long as you try to take care of you, it'll tie me up, it'll limit me from doing what I want to do for you and to you and through you. Because now you stop because Come and see minded. Shall God got a plan for me? Woo! Hallelujah. Just take a minute to think back how you didn't know how some things were going to happen and all of a sudden, boom, there it go. You didn't know what was going to take place. And th th there it go. I mean, here, here it is. I'm going to just give you a perfect prime example. Was it last Sunday, Robert? Uh, Bradley wasn't here. David wasn't here. They, and they known to be here early to walk, walk, walk me in and everything. And I thought about it. I said, man, I didn't even tell nobody about them guys wasn't going to be here this Sunday. And when I pulled up, AJ and Robert was here. And, I, and, and the thought came, I got you. <laughs> something, something that simple, that looks insignificant, but God wants us to know every detail about your life. He already got it. 
even though it may look significant. It may look like it don't mean nothing, but God got you covered. He already got everything that needs to be done covered. He said, all I need for you to do is get you off your mind and become seed-minded, start becoming a seed, and if you just do that, already, I'm going to take care of you. It ain't about how you're going to live. I got you. Oh, you're going to get every need. I'm going to make sure every desire you have come to pass. I'm going to make sure what, what's lacking in your life be fulfilled. All I need for you to do is to become seed-minded and not need-minded. Many needs are not being fulfilled because we're need-minded. Woo! Watch this here. I already know what you have need of. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these things. They what? Somebody just said it. You ain't working for it. You ain't going to try to make it happen. You ain't got to try to manipulate. You ain't going to try to figure it out. He said, no, I'm going to add it. In other words, before you know it, this happening. Before you know it, this has been added. Before you know it, this has been added. And all you're doing is becoming seed-minded. You planting your life as a seed. The lifestyle of the believer. Are you seeing this here? Think about it. Most people haven't become seed-minded. It's because we have developed this mentality that we're not going to let nobody use us or get over on us. Watch this. But you're in the kingdom now. And if a person even tried to do that, your, 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 your helper, who, who, is, who is the light of God, it's going, to, it's going to start picking up, back up. Don't go to lunch with them no more. Stop talking this. Stop doing this because, because see, he already know what you have need of. And, and, and it could be, and it could be, because yes, you do have shysters. Yes, you do have people always try, want to try to use you and abuse you and take advantage of you. So God said, no, no, if you seek first me, if you become seed-minded and, and, no, and, you, and you become a seed, even if a person is trying to do it, they ain't going to do it. I got you. Something going to be different. You're going to know something ain't right. I can't feel it. I don't know what it is. I, 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 good person, but I think I just might need to back up a little bit. Because your helper is giving you an indicator. Because he knows what you have need of. And your heart is pure. And all you just want to do is be a blessing. All you want to do is help. All you just want to do is be, be, be a good friend or be a whoever. And he said, but, but, he, but this person here don't have the same motive. And because they don't have the same motive, I don't want you to get entangled with something that's going to cost you later. But you're going to have to be sensitive to my leading. That's why he said, that's why in Matthew there again, 11, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and take my yoke upon you. But watch this. Learn of me. Learn me. Learn how I speak. Because when you learn how I speak, when another voice comes, you know that it ain't him. Learn how I move because when something has come around you that is moving a certain way, you know that ain't him. But watch this. And see, look where we are today. The discernment of the believer has gone shot all the way down. Most people don't even know right and wrong now. They don't even know how to distinguish voices anymore. Why? They have gotten away from becoming seed-minded. Woo! Go back to Matthew 11 again. Well, we don't read that, I guess. Matthew 11, yeah. We'll just go back and read it again. Take my yoke upon you, learn of me, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my, burden, for, my, for my yoke is easy. Watch this now. And my burden is light. I got to back up. Look at verse 29 again. Let me, read verse, let me just read verse 28 again. Come unto me, all you that labor... And are heavy laden, 
and I will give you rest. Jesus is letting you know he's the only one that can give you rest. But watch this. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest. Where? In your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotion. You'll find rest. Watch this, because I'm heading somewhere. We're talking about becoming seed-minded, the lifestyle of a believer. For my yoke is easy. My burden is light. So that burden and yoke that you carry that ain't easy and light, what burden and yoke is it? Because Jesus said, my burden is easy. My yoke, my commitment is light. It's not going to cause you to be weighed down mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. So if anything that's causing that, that ain't my yoke. That ain't my burden. So you got two types of burdens and yokes. You got the burden and yoke that come from God, but then you got the burden and yoke that come from the devil. And Jesus said the answer and the solution to the burden that come, the burden and the yoke come from the devil is the anointing. He said, and the anointing removes burden and it destroys yokes. But watch this. What is the anointing? Christ. So Christ said his burden is easy. His yoke is light. But the more I stay connected to him, then what was once a burden in the yoke, when I stay connected to God, I find myself walking in the peace that I didn't know was there. And the thing that the enemy was using one time to cause me to be distressed, discouraged, frustrated, heartbreaking, don't know how to move. I mean, I just, it just seemed like it's just a struggle. I just, everything is like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's a burden in the yoke that didn't come from God. And I guarantee you that came because I hadn't changed my thought process about something. I'm carrying something that I shouldn't be carrying. I'm talking about becoming seed-minded. Because remember, this is an accurate thing. This is accurate. Boy, this is accurate. Jesus is accurate. And see, what the enemy has done and what he is doing, he wants all of us to look at becoming seed-minded as if you can't do it. What's been done for me? What's been done for me? What you done for me lately? <laughs> and he said, no, I got you. This is how, this is the lifestyle of the believer. This is how the believer lives. He lives by his seed, not by need. If I keep running after needs, I'll never be fulfilled. People are trying to meet their own need, serving God. That's where the burden and the yoke come from. I'm trying to meet my own need, serving the need meter. And it's causing a burden and the yoke to come on me. Why are you seeing this here? Glory to God. Watch this here. Can we go a little bit deeper? Watch this here. Go to Matthew 15 right quick. I didn't mean to stay on there that long, but praise God, it's, it's all good. Matthew 15. Matthew 15. Become a seed minded. I'm telling I've been so stirred up with this. Every day he's talking to me about this. Every day. And this message sounds so simple. It sounds so just, just, just simple. But man, it, 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 is, it is the most misunderstood, underestimated law that exists. The law of seed time and harvest. And this is how this thing, this is how everything operates. The lifestyle of the believer. Look at Matthew 15. We must never lose sight and forget that we are kingdom citizens. And God got us. God got us. Come on, shout, God got me. He's taking care of me. He's going to continue to take care of me. 
Now look at Matthew 15 right quick. Look at verse 1. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees were of Jerusalem saying, Why do thy disciples transgress, watch the, the traditions of elders, for they wash not their hands when they eat bread? But he answered and said unto them, Why do you transgress the commandment of God? Watch this now. How? By your tradition. For God commanded, honor thy father and mother. He that cursed father and mother, let him die the death. But you say, in other words, God has already set the thing in law. He already set thing in motion. But you say, God is already telling us what to do. But you say, that the accurate, the accurate word has already been given. But you say, the accurate direction, the accurate uh, flow has already been demonstrated. But you say. <laughs> but you say, but you say, God has already said, how, how, how perfect, you can't get no perfect in God, but you say. God has already instituted some things, but you say, my burden is easy. My yoke is light. What if I tell you to do, oh, it's gonna be, oh it may cost you, but it's going to be easy. It's going to be light. You'll find it. It ain't hard as you think it is. Man, you looking at a person. This is my natural physical sister right here, Sheba. You looking at a person who at one time, Robert knew me, at one time in my life, I ain't loving you. Love you. And I, I love you all right. Love, I ain't loving nobody. Love weak. When you love, you weak. That was my thought process. You love people, you weak. You don't love uh, uh, weak. That's a sign of weakness. God, that was why my thinking, my thought process. Did I ever think I could love everybody? And if you would have asked me then, can you love everybody? No, you can't love everybody. Well, you can't love everybody. Because that was my thinking. Because I could not see myself loving everybody in a, in, in, a, in a sickening world where people hate, steal, cheat, murder, commit. So I couldn't see that. I, I couldn't see that I could love somebody who done me wrong. Let that go. Oh, I let something go, all right. Oh, oh, I can, oh, I will let a whole lot, I let boom, 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 boom. I'm going to let some stuff go. <laughs> I'm going to let it go. Now, I don't know where it may land. It may land at your house. It may land in your window. <laughs> but we'll let it go now. Why? Because I couldn't think that was possible. Why are you saying all that, Pastor? Because God said, but you say. Because you don't think you can do it. Because you're basing it off of everything you've been around. That's why even a man of God, okay, ain't, no, ain't no past that legit now. He, he got to have some kind of scandal. Because that's all you've seen. That's all you know. Now everybody is a potential scandaler. Because I, I, I can't try, I can't trust, I mean, tr trust, that's a hard word there, Pastor, that's a hard word, trust. Because you've been so exposed to people who have mishandled trust. And you don't think it's possible. Watch this. But Jesus, with his accurate information, said, if you can believe, all things are possible. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he shall what? That's perfect knowledge. Accurate knowledge. God said, but you say. Watch this here. Watch this. 
You're going to see what this means here in a minute. Because we're talking about becoming seed-minded, the lifestyle of the believer. But you say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift, by whatsoever thou mayest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have you what? Say it again. Thus have you what? Thus have you what? May what? The commandment of God, a non effect by your tradition. Look at verse 6 right quick and amplify it. Look at verse 6 and amplify it. Now, go back to verse 5, but I want you to go to 6 on the Amplified on the screen. But I'm going to read verse 5. But you say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift, by whatsoever thy mightest be profited by me. But you say, Jesus said, but now the commandment has already been given, but you say. But what did you get you say from? Now, watch this. You're holding on to something that is not guaranteed to produce, and you're holding that over accurate information. Because now you feel you don't have to do what he say because it has been said. But look what Jesus said. So look at verse 6 and Amplify. Look at verse 6 and Amplify right quick. So for the sake of your tradition, watch this, rules handed down by your forefathers. Watch this. Now you have set aside the word of God, watch this, depriving it. Depriving it of what? Of force. Depriving it of authority. Depriving it of power. It ain't that the word of God don't work. It's a tradition that you're holding on to that's causing it not to work. It's a way of thinking. It's something I'm constantly, continually holding on to. And watch this, choosing to do that over what he already said. Depriving it of force and authority and making it to no effect. It ain't that it ain't effective. It's been made to be ineffective. Because something I'm holding on to that he didn't say. Wow. Can y'all just give me a few minutes? Now, go to Mark chapter 4 now. Oh, I'm going to be on this for maybe another week or so. Because I'm just, I'm, just, I'm, just I'm just getting started. But you see how we've heard so much? I'm talking about, I'm able to teach this to you guys. I mean, it is, we've had to learn this process. We've had to learn this. That's how this thing is, is so alive in me right now. That's why I tell people, don't ever think, Pastor Stephen, th this word is so rich in me that sometimes it can seem like I'm talking about you. And if you're not watchful, you have to watch that. You have to watch the enemy. He'll, he'll, he, he can throw something at you. Well, you see how he just looked at you when you said that. <laughs> you see how he looked at you when he said that. He's he, he talking about you. But because it's, it's so real. But you got to ask him, why is it so real? We have to live it. We had to prove this thing. Anything that is real in you, when you give it, it'll be real. It's alive. We had to walk this thing out. That's why it sounds so rich and real. Because I had to change my thinking. Lady Seuss had to change her thinking. Watch this. Not had to do it, still doing it. That's why you never feel condemned here. You never let a thought or any, any type of conviction make you think you're being condemned or stones being thrown at you. It'll never happen in this pulpit here. They don't even do it. This is not the spirit of this church. But I have to take you and guide you and show you the things that we've been exposed to, the traditions that we've always heard that cause us 
to make the word of God to be ineffective in our lives. And you're praying. You're going to church, but you're wondering why I can't get my breakthrough. Because something I'm holding on to that I've always heard that came down through my forefather, something I've always told, I'm holding on to that. And watch this. And I'm, I'm getting hope from something that never going to produce. It's never going to produce. I'm never going to be happy off that. I'll never get fulfilled of traditions. Work rules have been handed out. I'll never get answered prayer of something that hadn't been proven. But I can go to the word of God and I can say what he tell me to say. And even though it may cost me, even though it don't seem right, feel right, and it don't look like it ain't happening, there is a guarantee at the end of that road that if I hang on to it and stand still, I'll see the end of that word. Are you with me here? Mark chapter 4 right quick as we close. Praise God. Becoming seed mind. Shout, I am a seed. Come on, say it again. Say it again. L listen to this statement here right quick. A changed mind for the better can only come about by a changed mind. This is what the Holy Spirit gave me. He said a changed mind for the better can only come about by a changed mind. A change mind for the better can only come about by a change mind. A person that hadn't changed can't help you change. An unrenewed mind can't help you renew yours. A change of mind for the better can only come about by a changed mind. Watch this. So when you see people changing and growing and thriving, that's who you want to be hooked up with. Why you want to be hooked up to something that ain't growing, ain't thriving? And watch this. Don't equate quality or quantity as a number as growing. Because everything that has Quantity, the number amount, don't mean it's growing. But see, that's what we in our time equates growth. We equate success by what we see. And that's the greatest deception. Because something is growing at a fast rate but has no substance. You don't even know the underlining of that thing. And you committing yourself to something that you don't, that's no even no guarantee. And the only reason why you're doing it because you're looking at something that could not even be real. Why? Because when you go to him and you get hooked up to him, you begin to find some stuff. Wait a minute. Hold on. This ain't what it all appears. Are you seeing this here? Watch this here. Watch this. Man, I felt something there because I feel like I need to ship there for just for a minute. Slow growth is the best growth you want. Anything that grows too fast, I guarantee you ain't healthy. Let, let, let's look at, God knows I know I'm on streaming. I, I'm, I'm just going to say Remember how they used to grow chicken? And now chicken is real plump now. But it seems like it don't taste the same. Look, look at the, the process of growth. How things, Grandma Neal, Miss Marguerite, Grandma Neal, man. And live to a hundred. We pull up Burger King, McDonald's. But, but cutting our lifespan. That's why I call it fast food. 
but it cuts the lifespan versus something that takes its time, watch this, and grow from the earth. And guess what God wants out of our life? He wants our life to come from the earth, meaning our heart. So there are things you may be conflicted with. There are things you may have to deal with. You may even have to go in your past and dig up some stuff that was put in the heart. Because every time you try to get here, you try to get that breakthrough, man, hear that thing come again? It's, but it's coming from the heart. One thing that you say, I thought I was over, but you said it, now I'm right back at it again. Because I didn't dig it up from the earth. So now everybody is a problem. You can't say nothing to me because I think you're trying to do something. <laughs> you think I'm a fool, don't you? I just said, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's how you said, hey. <laughs> Everything is coming from here. It's coming from there. Because it's something that I'm still holding on to that's depriving the word from force and making it active. God, I got to go. Mark chapter 4. There's such an anointing in here right now. I, I Oh, my God. There's such a rich anointing in here right now. And you know what that tells me? Everybody in here is receiving. This, this anointing that is in here right now, it, it, it's penetrating some hearts. It's, it's penetrating some souls. And, and, and watch this. No, I, there is no offense in here nowhere. Because the presence is too thick. Are you seeing this here? God, I got to go. Look at Mark chapter 4. See, become a seed minded. See, I'm planting a seed. I'm planting a seed. That's why I'm telling you, don't never become offended in here. I'm sowing in you. I don't just come preach, entertain. No, I'm sowing. I'm so, because I know that one day this seed going to get in you. And if you keep the ground right, and if you take, remove the stuff out of the ground that can affect that seed, then you can become everything that seed said you can. I don't look at where you are, because where you are is not where you're going to be. Where you are is not how it ends. Because there is a seed that has the potential to meet every need. So I am sowing that I'm seed-minded. But I got to get you to become seed-minded. Because when you become seed-minded, you won't be looking at nobody else. You won't be thinking about nobody else. Your focus and attention won't be on nobody else. You understand, I got I to gotta get this seed in me and I got to become a seed. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at Mark chapter 4 as we close for tonight. This is God's accurate way. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be what? Shout, there are some things been added to my life. Shall, I know how to get things added. Watch this here. I know we ain't going to be able to get to all of it tonight, but we're just going to start. Look at Mark chapter 4 right quick. And look at, look at verse 10. Jesus was just teaching his disciples or teaching the whole multitude. But look at verse 10 right quick. And when he was alone, they were about him with the twelve, asked him the parable because they didn't understand what Jesus was just teaching. They, they, they just didn't get it. And look at verse, the, the, uh, when he was alone, verse 11. And he said unto them, watch this now. This is a very key statement. And he said unto them, unto who? You 
It is given to know, know what? In other words, God do not want none of us to lack knowledge. Why? He said, my people are what? Destroyed. Why? For lack of knowledge. The second was Isaiah 5.13. My people have gone into captivity. Why? Because they have no knowledge. Isaiah 4. And go on down, 6 said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And he said, and some have rejected knowledge. So that's the third thing. He said, and because you reject knowledge, I now have no other choice but to reject you. Because to me, my word is one. And when you reject my me, meaning knowledge, then I, I, how, can I, how can I do for you when you reject me? So there are three types of knowledge there, or a lack of. Lack of knowledge, rejected knowledge, and, and no knowledge. Or we could just say it this way, no knowledge, lack knowledge, rejected knowledge. So Jesus said, it is given unto you to know. In other words, God wants you and I to know how to live in this earth and live God's way. And it's be through knowledge. It's given unto you to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. I, I, I'm closing, but give me a few minutes. Why is it a mystery? Because the Gentiles don't understand it. Those who have no covenant with God. Those who don't know God. They don't, that's why it's a mystery. But Jesus said it's not a mystery to you. It's not supposed to be a mystery. In other words, God has strategically set this thing up where he wants you and I to know how to get things done. That's, and, and, and that's my whole motivation. Every time I stand in front of you, it is to give you seed through knowledge so you can walk away and make your life. That's what you got to understand about this brook here. This is what life changing is all about so you can get an understanding. That's why, okay, he's a long-winded preacher. I got a lot to say. In a short period of time. Because I only got two days out of seven days with you. And I got to do everything I can between two days. Because I'm up against five other days. That you are consumed with the world. You consumed with all this other crazy stuff that goes on all around you. So I'm now competing against five days. So I got to make sure I put some stuff in you. That, that sustain you for these five days. I got, when I leave your presence or when you leave my presence, that's why he's so serious. That's why. It ain't that I'm serious or mad. No, no, no. I understand. Man, I'm up against five days. There are things you go through that don't nobody know what you go through. You're constantly confronted with things. There are things you have to deal with that don't nobody know about. You're constant. You could be in a constant battle seven days a week, but you're God's child, and God has committed Himself to you. And but God said, "I love you enough that I'm going to give you a pastor, and that pastor is going to feed you with knowledge and understanding, so that when you go back to your job and go back to your neighborhood or go back to whatever you need to go to, you are equipped with everything you need to be equipped with to handle the confrontation that you encounter." So this is what when you come in life change, and this is what this is about. You got to understand that. Because if not, man, you could be entertained by somebody else or something else that seem a certain way. I can't tell you if they are, are, are ministry minded or not. I don't know. That ain't my business. Watch this. That ain't even my business to know. My business is to do what he told me to do. this here. But that's how we can get lost. Watch this right quick. Mark 4. Unto you that sin, look at verse 12, that sin they may see and not perceive. Hearing they may hear watch this. Not understand. These in the time they should be what? Converted 
and their sins should be forgiven. Notice, until there is a conversion, I'll see but can't see. I'll hear but don't even understand. Until there is a conversion, until there is a conversion in my heart, until there is a conversion in my heart, my heart affects my sight and ears. Your heart. Your heart will cause you to see clear. Your heart will even cause you to be intensity in your hearing. Or your heart can even cause you not to see nothing. Your heart can also cause you not to hear nothing or hear the wrong thing. All these people are here, and I'm sowing the same seed in every heart and in every ear. But watch this. The interpretation can be different. And it ain't based upon me. It's based upon the condition of the heart and how they hear it. This is what Jesus is trying to get us to understand. The lifestyle of the believer. He made this thing so simple, so plain. But I, I, I'm going to close with this because this is the point I really want to get to tonight. And we'll just pick this back up Sunday. Look at verse 13. He said unto them, know you not this parable. How then will you know all parables? If you don't get this one, you won't know nothing else. In other words, this is what everything, everything that is written, this is what it's all about. Everything, ministry, everything that is written, Jesus is letting you and I know, if you don't get this, you won't get nothing concerning this robber. If you don't understand this principle that is being taught, you won't understand nothing about the kingdom. Grab that. Jesus is letting you and I know, if you don't get this principle here about becoming seed-minded, the power of the seed, everything that you hear from this point on about coming to church, it won't even really mean nothing. Because everything is based off this. If you don't know this, you won't know all things. Watch this here. Let's be closed. Watch this. The sower do what? The sower do what? The sower soweth the word. Watch this. Is he being made to sow the word? Hmm? Did somebody say something? He's already a sower. So what do a sower do? Wait a minute now. Y'all said that too quick. A sower do what? Yeah, see, y'all, 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 y'all said that too quick. You mean to tell me it's just that simple? You mean to tell me it's just that simple? A sower. But no, see, see, y'all, see, I, I don't understand because, see, because, you know, it, it, it's a struggle. Life is a struggle. But a sower, so. Well, when did it become difficult to understand that a sower sows? How, when did it become complicated? When did my life as a Christian become complicated when a sower sows? I can tell you why. My people are destroyed, but they lack knowledge. My people have gone, gone. My people have gone. My people have gone. They weren't supposed to be in the captivity or bondage, but they have gone into. They, have, they, they found themselves in a bondage situation because they just didn't have no knowledge. My pe some of my people reject knowledge. Okay, but since now you since you reject the knowledge, when you reject knowledge, do you realize what's coming since you reject knowledge? Since you reject knowledge, now you don't have no other choice but to receive what you just rejected. So now the hardship of a Christian comes out of those three places. And that's why he said, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom. But seek ye first 
the kingdom of God. See, my whole Christian life should be, okay, go to work, do your job, but come get the word so you can learn how to become better, how to become more skilled. How? Watch this. You, because you want to stay, your job, that's not how you make your living anyway. You make your living by your giving. So you understand that. So you realize, okay, you got a job. Thank God for the job. Okay, man, praise God. But, man, and you're going to be good at it, and you're going to do, do good at it, whatever. But, but I still need to hear the word because the more word I hear, the better I can become. And guess what? God may even move you from that place because there are greater doors can open. Not that you even have the degree for it, but because now you got the seed of that word. And the seed of that word can move you from out of this position into another position, and people can't figure out how. How is it that you getting raises and increase when everybody else ain't supposed to be getting none? How is it that you get a job when the market has shut down? How is it that you get a new house when everybody else ain't supposed to? How is it that you got things happening for you that ain't happening for everybody else? Why? The seed. This is how the kingdom operates. And he said, I got to get my people to become seed minded. The sower soweth. The sower soweth. I gotta close. God, I gotta close. The sower soweth what? The sower do what? Intentionally, on purpose, the lifestyle of the believer. I gotta sow this word in me. I gotta sow it in me because this is how I live. This is where my life gonna come from. So I just can't let, watch this. Anything get in my ears. I just can't even let any conversation get in my ears. Because any conversation that get in my ears, watch this, those are seeds too. And I could find myself in a place not even knowing how I got there, but if I track back, if I begin to track back, what seed got in? That's now causing me to think different, act different, respond different, do different. Nothing don't just happen. Everything comes from a seed. If you don't know this parable, you won't know all know nothing. This is what Jesus said. This is the parable of it all. This is what your whole life is going to be is it's surrounded around. The sower soweth the word intentionally, on purpose. I got to sow this word. Whether if anybody sow it or not, I have to become seed-minded. Jesus said, God, I got to close. Jesus said, yeah. oh, God, close. I can see Nisha now say, yeah, you said you were closing a little early, huh? Uh-huh, I told you. <laughs> Jesus said, do to them as you would like for them to do to you. Because you're planting a seed. Your words is your seed. What you're doing is a seed. Are you hearing me? The sower soweth the word. I promise you, I'm letting you go all this because this is the one I want to end with right here. Verse 15. I've got to end with this if we pick up Sunday. Look at verse 15. These are they. By the wayside, where the word is sown, but when they have what? What happens? For what? Every battle that you encounter is over the word that you have heard and received. That's why I had to end with it. I know I took you a long route, but I had to end with this tonight. Every, every. Every battle that you encounter is over a word that you receive. And that's what he's after. He don't want that word to get planted down in the soil of your heart. He'll, he'll send another word to, get, to try to make that word inoperative. How would he do that? Get you envy, get you in strife, get your heart hard or something, or even someone. Now the seed 
that, that has the power to produce, remember Matthew 15, has been made to be inoperative. So it ain't that the word don't work. It ain't that the preaching ain't effective. What have I heard that got in my heart that's eating up and making my seed unproductive? I'm closing with this. I, I came across something and I got to end with this. Some of you may even know where it's at. I was reading early this morning. John said, are he the one or should we look for another? Jesus said, go tell John, the blind see, the lepers are clean, the dead are raised, the poor have the gospel preached unto them. But then Jesus ended this to tell John, blessed are they who should not be offended in me. I read that, and I was like, okay. He took me deeper. How can a man who baptized a man seen the dove, heard the father, this is my beloved son, but then turn around and say, are you the one? A fence that gets in your heart would change your whole perception about people, things, God, and everything. And it's designed to destroy you. Because what happened John the Baptist next? His head was cut off. And it was his offense that could have cost him his head. He's questioning the man that he done saw. But how did he get to that point? He was in prison. Watch this. Isolated. By himself. Now open to all kind of inner voices. Glory to God. Come on, stand with me. I'm done. Come on, stand with me. Come on. Come on, stand with me. Come on, stand with me. Who become a seat minded? You have the answer to every need in your life right now. And it's with the seed. You have the answer right now. Come on, lift your hands right, Chris. Say, Lord, I thank you that you've given me the answer to every situation. And as of this moment, I'm sowing the word. I know for a fact. I will. I shall. Conquer. Overcome. Win. Be victorious. In every situation. I'm out of debt. Every need is met. I'm whole. I'm strong. I'm vibrant. I'm thriving. I'm steady increasing. I'm steady growing. I cannot be hindered. I cannot be stopped. I got favor with God. I got favor with man. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Everything I touch shall be blessed. I'm putting this. I'm sowing this in the ground of my heart. And no demon, no devil, no ridicule, no person can stop or hinder what God doing in me, what God is doing through me. I am an answer. I am an answer. I am an answer. I am an answer. I am am victorious. I'm thriving. In Jesus' name. Come on and give God praise for that. That's your seed. That's your seed. That's your seed. That's your seed. Praise God.
If he didn't offer them, Lord, lift your hands when he's anointed ushers. We'll get you one. Praise God. Man, were you blessed tonight? Yes. I challenge you by the spirit of almighty God to get this. Listen to it. Become a seat minded. It's not where you are that matters. It's what you're planning what matters. It's not where you are that matters. It's what you're planning. Watch this here. And you don't have to have a whole bunch of money to plan. You got the greatest access to planting, which is your tongue. Your tongue can bring everything to you. I felt that in the wall. I felt that. I felt that. Your tongue. Your tongue. You trying to work, but you have a tongue. You trying to do these, but you have a tongue. And your tongue can bring some things to you that your hands can't even work. 